Hi, and welcome back to part two, launching an EC2 instance in the AWS cloud. So just to pick up where we left off in part one, quick look at some other aspects of the server. Again, I can see what virtual private cloud, and um, basically this is spun up this EC2 instance in, I can see the subnet ID. Um, also, I can see my instance type. If I scroll across here, there's more information. I can see the availability zone. Okay, so again, this links back to um, what region am I in? And in my case, I was in the North Virginia, US East region, but we can actually see that we're in, it's, it's, it's created this instance in the 1A, basically, availability zone. So this could be a data center or a series of data centers. Okay, um, I can see other parameters here like the public uh, um, IP addresses and as I scroll over you can see I've got lots of other um, various aspects. I can see the launch time, I can see my key pair that I'm using. Let's try connect to it again because again we've given it a few minutes now. It should have gone through all its preliminary checks. Let's go back over here. I'm going to click on again actions. I'm going to go to connect and I'm going to go to RDP and I'm going to try get the password again. Okay, this time you can see it's, 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 it's allowed me to do that. So what it's saying now, it's saying, hey, browse to your key pair. So what I need to do now, guys, is I need to, let's close that. What I need to do is I need to grab up my key pair. So just bear, bear with me one second. I'm going to browse where that actually was saved. So I'm going to go into my downloads folder here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste over that. So first I need to just find it. Um, so let me go into my downloads folder and I want to throw in that. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to add that in here. Whoop! My apologies, I need to browse to that. It's not going to allow me to drop, drag and drop that over. I'm going to now need to select my, my particular file. So again, what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to go to my downloads, go here open and I can see here in this particular case it's now I can decrypt the password okay so I'm going to click on this and what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to you can see here now I've got the decrypted password I'm going to copy that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the remote desktop file once I've done that I'm going to now click on this RDP file this should basically put the parameters in for me and um, again, it's trying to, it's giving up. Don't worry about this. This is basically saying it can't verify the certificate. Again, we're not doing this over a secure protocol, but it's basically just connecting to this and it's saying the certificate couldn't be verified back to a root certificate. That's absolutely fine. We can click continue for that. Now what it's gonna prompt me to do is put in my password. So I copied that password to the clipboard. If I paste that in, I can show the password. So you can see in this case, this is this big long password that I decrypted using my key pair just a moment ago. I'm gonna click on continue. And what we're gonna see now is we should hopefully RDP into this instance. So up it's coming guys, and this might take a, a second or two to load up, but what we're now doing is we're actually accessing our EC2 Windows base image. And you can see it's going through some initial settings like personalized settings. And this should bring me to the desktop in just a moment. And once I get to the desktop, I will be able to see. It'll also come up with some um, information here on the right hand side once Windows has loaded up, showing me my IP addresses and so forth. I can click, do I want to allow? Uh, I can say yes to this to allow my PC to be discoverable. And what I like to do whenever I get onto the command prompt is I like to launch the start menu. I like to go into CMD, my command prompt. Let's open up that. And what I can do is I can just do an IP config. Okay. And what we can see here, guys, is we can see the IPv4 address. So this is the private IP address of this machine. It's 172.31.89.143. And then basically, I can see the subnet mask and also the default gateway too. In addition, guys, up in this top right-hand corner, as I mentioned, 
just a moment ago, I can also see my additional details. So again, I can see the availability zone it's in. I can see the instance size that I chose, the T2 micro. I can see my private IP. This should obviously match the IP address that I've just done in my command prompt here. I can also see the public IP address that my instance has received. Okay, so now that I'm logged into this instance, again, I can start installing uh, software. I'm, it's in my responsibility to obviously um, go from here. So what I'm now going to do, guys, actually, is I'm going to exit out of RDP. And what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm just going to show you. So again, I'm going to go back to my services and go back to EC2. And what I can show you now, guys, is I can see that this is still running. Um, if I want to stop it, you can see, again, the dashboard, I like to see this. You can see I've got an additional security group now. I've got a, now a key pair, okay? I needed that key pair to obviously connect to this running instance. You'll also notice that I've got a volume. So again, just to let you know, when you fired up that instance, that the root volume is located in what's called an elastic block store. So again, this is not connected. It's connected to our basically our instance, but it's connected over the network. So we can see, in fact, that again, this is you know my own. I gave it the name. If you remember when I created this um, tag originally, you can also see the size of it, and that was something actually we didn't do. So again, guys, if I want to go back and log into that server again, I could go back to the dashboard. Go back to the to running instance and let's connect to it again. I wanted to show you the size of the hard drive, just to double check. If I want to go back here, I can click on actions, connect again, again, RDP client. And let's let's go through the same, just for, just uh, let's go get password. Again, it's asking me browse for your key pair. I'll go browse. Again, I'll select my key pair here, the one I've just downloaded. And what it should do now is I should be able to decrypt my password. I've got my password again. Um, now what I'll do is I'll just, for simplicity's sake, I'll download the RDP file. This should load my client. Again, if you're on a, a Mac computer here, I'm using an RDP client. So you may need to install this up front. Okay. Um, I'm going to pop in my password. Again, that's going to match up to the same password here. I'm going to continue. Um, again, it should load in quicker because again, the operating system is loaded at this stage. You can see I've left off, you know, I, I've, I've jumped in where I left off. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop open um, my computer here. So if I go to, let's have a look. Can I just type in my computer or this PC? And what I want to do, guys, is just have a look. So in this case, you can see, folks, have a look at the hard drive space. It's just under 30 gigabytes, okay? There's some, some, some space there that, um, that needed to be formatted. But again, this is the 30 gigabytes file size that I created for this particular hard drive. And you can see that uh, I've only got 16.2 free because obviously the, the Windows operating system is taking up um, some of my storage space here. Okay, I'm gonna close out of that RDP again, guys. Just to show you, and what I like to show you is because I'm using my AWS Educate, and again, you know, to reserve or to keep my credits as many as possible, what I like to do is I like to go back to the dashboard and I like to clean up after myself. So again, if I'm not using this instance, what I like to do is I like to go into running instances. Um, now again, I could, if I wish, go here and I could select this and I could go to actions for example, I could scroll down, it's not easy to see this, but again, I've got actions here, instance state, and I could go to stop instance. Sometimes I also like to use this right click on the instance again. It's just sometimes it's, it's nicer to be able to see all of the options. I could stop the instance again, and I'm gonna stop getting charged for running that instance. It'll go and you can see I'm, it said successfully stopped. But just one thing to note, sometimes I see people that they've got all of these instances and they're all in a stopped state. Just remember though, you still have the basically the elastic block store. So again, there will be the um, the hard drive running still. So you can see in this case, if I go to the elastic block store and volumes, you'll notice here, even though that instance is stopped now, you still are getting charged for this basically volume. Okay, now if you no longer need 
this instance, so in this case for me, I was just testing this out to just show you RDPing into this instance. What you can actually do is you can actually go to right click here, go to instance state, and what you can do is terminate the instance. Now again, this by doing this, I won't do it just yet, if I wanted to turn back on this instance, it would be just a matter of just clicking this button again, right clicking and instance state and start instance, and again, I could then RDP into that instance. But again, in this case, I'm finished my demo, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna terminate this particular instance. So you can see, in this case, it's saying, you know, to confirm that, I'll click terminate, and as you can see here, it's going, it's saying successfully terminated. And that'll take a couple of seconds. It won't clear off your screen. You can refresh here in a few moments. Eventually, this will basically, you can see it's gone into a state of terminated. Eventually, what will happen is this will disappear from your dashboard. Also, you'll notice if you go back to Elastic Block Store, you'll notice that the volume now is gone because I've obviously terminated the instance and that's, that instance is connected to this EBS volume. So again, just to avoid any charges there. Okay, folks, that's the end of that demo. I hope um, that's been helpful and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.